All right, good morning, church family. You know, we've been going through Psalm 119 every morning, and we're also been going through Exodus. But, you know, this is the final, um, the final Sunday before Christmas. And as Christians, we need to stop and be grateful for Christmas, and we should be celebrating the birth of Christ every day, and I want to take a look on how the Hebrews may have celebrated Christmas 2,500 years ago, before the birth of Christ, Yes, right. what they had to look forward to. There was 122 different prophecies Christ had to fulfill to be the Messiah. So let's go ahead and look at Isaiah chapter 7, starting at verse 10. Yeah, let me get to verse 10. I'm on verse 10, but I'm not on verse 10. Okay, I'm there. It says again. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shoal, as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You might ask what Emmanuel is. It means God with us. Yeah. And you got to look at the way that, that this is spoke. A virgin shall conceive a son. We're talking about a God who created, who said, let there be light, and there was light. Who spoke life into existence. When Adam and Eve was created, they weren't born. No. They, they, they were never an infant. Never. Think about that. They were created mature. This earth was created mature. mature. Science could break down on what it would look like for a planet to grow and how many thousands or millions of years it would take for everything to happen. But the fact is, God created it mature. And with that same creation, that same word, he said that this virgin is going to have a child and it is going to be God. And God is going to be with you. That child is going to be fully God and fully man. So they had this to look forward to. And then again in Isaiah chapter 9, starting at verse 2, as I flip all the way to Matthew, oops, <laughs> verse 2, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light, those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shone, you have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy, they rejoice before you, as with joy in the <laughs> harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil, for the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor you have broken. As on the day of Midian, for every boot of the tr trampling warrior in battle turmoil, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of increase of his government, and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it up and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth 
and forever more. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. With prophecies such as this, the Hebrews had to look forward to what Christ was going to do. It is believed that these prophecies about Christ being born were written in the 8th century B.C. Around the year 740 B.C. Roughly 700 plus years before the birth of Christ. These people had to look forward to what God was going to do. In faith. We've always had to have faith in God. To have our belief. In 2 Samuel 7, 12-13, Samuel spoke to David. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise you up, offspring, to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. From the beginning, God knew the path for salvation. And he let us know through all these prophecies, throughout the whole Bible, every book of the Bible points to Jesus. And those who truly seek God can see it. God will take the blinders off of those who seek. Salvation's always been centered on faith in the Messiah, faith in Christ Jesus. During the time of Isaiah, people looked to the coming of Christ for salvation. Now we look at the finished work of the cross of Christ for salvation and on to his second coming. So Christians... We should be celebrating God's promise, Savior coming to earth for our salvation. The greatest gift out of love we could ever be given. When we talk, when we think of Christmas, many people are split on how they feel. For some, it's the best of times, the best times of their lives with their loved ones, and for others, it's a sad reminder of those times that they no longer have. But in God, as Christians, we need to be grateful that we stand on the fact we will be reunited with our loved ones in Christ. Thus, we should be grateful and marry and share God's love with others. This is the best way to celebrate Christmas. We need to to let the Spirit of God shine from within us. To, to, to let people know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And even if we've lost our loved ones who we used to enjoy our Christmas with as children, we need to share that joy with the next generation. And let them know that we can still have that joy because we know that in Christ we're going to get to see those loved ones again and celebrate because of what Christ did. And if Christ hadn't come, we wouldn't have that chance. So, as you look back on the words of Matthew, chapter 1, starting at verse 18, I'm going to go there anyway. I wasn't going to. The birth of Jesus. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. You know, that shows a lot about Joseph's character right there. Because Joseph was in a position where, hey, look, you're pregnant? You're supposed to be a virgin? No, you're sleeping around on me, woman. And I, according to the law, I can put you to death. That's right. But he said no. I'm a just man. She messed up. 
I don't want nothing to do with her, but I'm not going to make a big deal about it. Let her live her life. Let her be able to take care of that child. Yeah. He was showing care and love. He was a godly man, and, and a lot of people overlook this. So he, he, he said he's going to put her away quietly. But as he, as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. Take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So he stopped and, and you know the Bible says, and, and, and I'm I know Joseph was a man of God. Yes. I know he had read the Proverbs at this point. There's no doubt about it. The Proverbs says, be slow to anger and quick to listen. Yes. He was taking his time, he was considering his path, what he was gonna do. He was seeking God, and God reached out to him and said, Hey, look. This is of God. Take her as your wife. This baby's from the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, and knowing the scriptures, as he had probably read Isaiah, he probably knew what was going on at this point. Yeah. God was open in his eyes. He says, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel had commanded him, and he took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. We all know the story about the shining star and the wise men that came. Everybody says there's three, but the Bible don't say three. There were three types of gifts. Yep. We've been a, a band of wise men. That's we know true. that story. Yeah. But we got to stop and realize that all the prophecy that had taken place for it to come to this point. For that birth to happen. It was all part of God's plan. And everything that's happening today in this world. As we're unsure about what's going on. It's still all part of God's plan. God has told us what is to come. He's told us about the second coming of God. He's told us about the judgment this world's going to come under. He's told us about the victory that that is going to be. He's told us about everything. And those of us who accept what Christ did, who accept that, that God came to earth and lived to die for our sins, are going to heaven. You see, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Now, when you look at the word loved, it's an action word. It's not just saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. No. God loved us so much that he did what? He gave. He gave his only begotten son. That can be translated as one and only special son. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Now that whosoever means a lot to me because I remember people making me as a child feel disqualified. If you do this, you're not going to heaven. If you do that, you're not going to heaven. If you do that, no. The Bible says whosoever. That's anybody that believes. Now that believe is another action word. If you truly believe, you're going to apply it to your life. Yes. Anybody that believes should not perish but have everlasting life. Tell people. 317 says, For he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Be grateful that he didn't send Jesus into the world that time to condemn the world. This next time he'll be condemning. Mm. But that time he didn't send him to condemn the world. Why? Because we all fall short of God's glory. None of us deserve to make it. So he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. That word might, that's the biggest, littlest word in all these verses. It's the word everybody overlooks. Why does it say might? Because you need to choose. He paid your way on the cross. But you need to believe. You need to accept. You know, yeah. You need to take it. If I'm holding out a hundred dollar bill and I say you can have it and you never come get it, are you going to ever get it? 
It says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Anybody can speak it. Second part, I read it like a contract. It says, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. All you got to do is believe it. Accept it. Accept not, not just that he was a man that lived. There's plenty of proof to that. You're accepting that he is the son of God. That he died on the cross for your sins. That there is nothing you can do to go to heaven. He did it all. You're not earning your way. He paid your way. When you do that, the Holy Spirit will come within you. God will fill you with your, with his love, his guidance. The mind of Christ will be within you. And God will bring a change into your life. What's that change known as? It's known as repentance. You're no longer going to live for yourself. That's why I said belief is an action word. You're going to live for God. You're going to share his love. Mm -hmm. Jesus said you can take all the commands and roll them up into two. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. As you celebrate Christmas this year, stop and realize that the only reason there is a Christmas, not an Xmas, X takes Christ out. A Christmas is Christ Mass. Understand, the only reason there is a Christmas is because Christ came so that you can have eternal life. Yes. Celebrate Jesus. He's the reason for Christmas. Start a relationship with him if you haven't. Be blessed.